Okay. Welcome to Astrology Today, coming to you live from the beautiful Sunshine Coast and the Kafat region, which is situated on the traditional lands of the Klahoma Nation. I will be your host, Maureen Reed, and Jill and I, Jill's from Victoria, we are from this point forward going to do tape shows that air on Saturdays in Powell River at 90.1 FM. Otherwise, you can um, see this on, you can click on the audio on my website, you can go to YouTube. Uh, we're also on Spotify. Yeah, there's a number of places where oh, we're uh, everywhere. We're every well, let's hope not. <laughs> that would be scary. And speaking of scary, I have to hit start on my timer so that the show is long enough. Anyway, this episode, episode 132, um, it's going to be on health and well being in the birth chart. And one can easily argue that the whole chart is about one's health and well being. And that is actually true. Mm -hmm. yeah yes. so the, so, yeah <laughs> so the sum of the parts have something to say about one's general state of one's health um, and astrologers can take a walk into a chart and see health matters with suggestions to achieve the best outcomes that would be one of them for sure um and the different there's different um schools of astrology that um you know have different methods of walking in but there are a few pieces that are generally accepted as the first place to start looking um and having said that it's uh we're going to actually spend a few episodes on this but this one this one this week is about the big overview so i'll let jill take that away yeah, well, for me, um, so I've been doing astrology uh, 40 years at least, well, more than that. Anyway, uh, and I've always seen, I mean, it hit me right away. It's a circle and the circle represents wholeness, right? Yes. So, yep. so always, and I, I always kind of harp on this when we're doing these, you can't take one piece out and just look at that. You have to look at the whole picture. I mean... You're looking at the parts within, but ultimately it is a whole. Uh -huh. yes. And so with that perspective, I always I always thought, because I've always had an interest in health and um, um, care system that is truly holistic. Uh -huh. And so when I started learning body talk, it was like I found it. Because it it truly is. You're you're working with the whole, you're not, you know. And also, I think, you know, it's important to, to differentiate between health <laughs> and what we have is in terms of medicine, you know, because there's a, a medical approach, but I'm talking about health. And I looked up the root words for health, and I thought yeah. that was really quite interesting. The old, it comes from the old English, meaning wholeness, a being whole, sound, or well. And that's from the Proto-Germanic, meaning whole, uninjured, of good omen. Mm -hmm. yes. and, um, and from the Old Norse as well, meaning healthy. The Old English, Old Norse, mean, Norse which was, this part's interesting, meaning holy and sacred. Ah, nice. Yeah. 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 And, and I was... And also, um, um, of physical health in Middle English, it, it also meant prosperity, happiness, welfare preservation and safety uh -huh. so uh -huh. you know it's it's again it's for me it's not it's not just about physical health that's important yes. we yeah. are we have these arbitrary divisions between physical emotional mental and spiritual but we are all that because yes. we are all, right? yeah exactly exactly right? and it's an important part of the perspective that i bring to not just healthcare as a holistic healthcare practitioner but to astrology as well yeah so yeah and healing of course means restoration to health um restoration to wholeness yeah exactly and like you were saying um you know unfortunately our medical system 
kind of, um, especially Western medical systems, not so mm. much Eastern or Chinese no. and that, no. um, they, they ran down this road um, of, you know, uh, mechanical. And, yeah. and they've even gone so far down that road now that um, whatever the precursor that brought somebody into dis-ease um, really has no factor in the way they approach it, no, no. you know, and, and it's true, you know, if you, um, you know, uh, break a leg or something, um, prior conditions or typically are, are not part of it. It's true. No. But, um, you know, if, uh, you know, if your stomach is going sideways, then yeah, there's bound to be some earlier statement, well, yeah, or from earlier from scenarios that have um, forced that particular system because. Yeah, yeah from a holistic perspective, yeah. as with Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, uh -huh. they, don't, they don't look at disease, they look at. Exactly. A state of wholeness and yeah. balance, right? Yes. Yeah. If you have perfect balance, you have perfect health, right? And that's not just physical, but again, emotional, mental, spiritual as well. Yeah. Those things, yeah. those, those aspects are all part of health that need to be in balance. So, so, so much of our modern life is way out of balance. Yes. Yeah. Right? And, and including, yeah, what, what we call medical care. I mean, since Rockefeller took over in 1913 <laughs> and was trying to sell drugs, <laughs> It's, it's been very much oriented that way, but it's also become so compartmentalized. Yeah, you know? I think the compartmentalizing, um, and, you know, on one level, we can see, you know, uh, you know, a doctor getting involved in medicine, because let's say his, you know, his father died of cancer, right, oh. you know, so he's going to get into medicine, and he's going to focus primarily on that. Um, yeah. And and that's just a that's a function of the way society's headspace mindset has gone, yeah. and Absolutely. which is too bad, you know, because like mm -hmm. you say, it we aren't just you know you can't just take that piece without considering all the rest. And it hasn't just affected you know our healthcare system; it's affected how we treat nature, you know, itself. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we are natural beings, and we've kind of left that out of the picture. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and nature, nature sets yeah. things up to to work in balance. Right? Yeah, we used to talk about the balance of nature, right? And yeah. as soon as you get in there and interfere with that, things are out of balance. And yeah. so from a holistic perspective, as a as a healthcare practitioner, you know, I don't go in saying, "Oh, what's wrong?" But I go in saying, "You know what." imbalances can we address first here and you know help nudge the body back towards being in balance because uh -huh. very often people have gotten way out of balance before they yeah. start considering you know holistic yeah. i need something i need something to change here well, so one of the things that um just before we came on the show here this morning i was listening chris brennan on the astrology podcast has a um interview with Lee Lehman, and she is a practicing medical astrologer insofar as um, where she sees astrology and, um, and looking at a chart from uh, a health, physical health, but she doesn't exclude all the rest. She doesn't compartmentalize, um, but she sees it as what is your particular balance Yes. Right. And so that's what we're going to explore. We're just going to do sort of a big overview today. Um, and so we'll talk about how the ancients looked at it, because for many centuries, when um, the uh, Christianity had punted astrology out because, you know, we were uh, taking too much out of their power turf, <laughs> the one place where it didn't get punted um, was in medicine. And, you know, through the, you know, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th century, there were chairs of astrology in universities because they were one of the ways that people who were practicing bringing people into a healing state 
they would look at the charts from a humor's perspective. In other Absolutely. words, another way of saying that is, and in Ayurveda, they do this too, constitution. Yeah. And, um, and in Chinese, they do what's called pulses, right? And so your chart will show um, where your particular balances could be out or where, you know, like we're not um, one each individual state of wholeness is not going to be the same as the next person. Yeah. And, yeah. And, it, and it's the balance of the elements. It's the balance yeah. of all the different bits and pieces that make up the whole, right? Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, you know, and, and it's always been for Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, all those ancient ways of doing health. It's always been about, you know, assessing what the balance is within the body-mind complex. And yeah. How do we reestablish a, a more flow, more harmony, more balance within that? And, uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's sort of where I've always been too. So, yeah, and I think yeah, the chart's a brilliant place to start with that because you are looking at a whole. Exactly. You know, exactly. All that lies within that, and you know, it's not. Yeah, again, there's the there's a, the different elements, but you've also got the different planets and the different. Yeah to one another how's it you know exactly it's, exactly that's why yeah like everything else to do with astrology it is complicated yeah so today i i've put together some graphics my favorite thing to do almost mm -hmm. um although i kind of ran out of creative juice so they're a little bit blah but <laughs> so uh what i would recommend i didn't actually do a jpeg of them so if you want to capture these just use your print screen but we're gonna just take a moment and just go through all the happy little pieces and um okay so obviously this is on my website and so if you go to uh, www.cardinalastrology.ca and you go to the radio page, which is what I am literally doing on screen for folks. Uh, oops, where am I going? There we are. The Astrology of Health and Healing. Duh. Okay. And just as a reminder so that nobody gets their knickers in a knot, um, astrology is no substitute for seeking professional medical help. Okay, so that's our disclaimer, whether that be holistic, whether that be Ayurveda, whatever it is that works for you. Yeah, we are not a substitute for that. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with the signs because they literally kind of were arranged as if somebody was laying down yeah. <laughs> around the circle. So Aries starts with the head. Um, it's also been associated with, um, you know, your face, your brain, brains show up everywhere. I think the only place I've left it in this list is in Aries, but yeah, yeah well, it shows up brain, everywhere. Brain is, the, is the central yeah. system for relating everything, everything related. Yeah, but the, the thing with the brain is the same kind of cells that you find in the brain, you find that in the belly as well. And the heart. Yeah, you find brain cells everywhere. We have a brain, we have a brain brain, we have a heart brain, and we have a gut brain. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But th this is the traditional. So Taurus is the throat, the voice, the neck, Gemini, hands, arms, shoulder, nervous system, lungs. Um, cancer is the breast and stomach. Leo, heart, spine, chest, ribs. Uh, Virgo, digestive system, belly. Uh, Libra, skin, moles, acne, kidneys, hips, buttocks, Scorpio, genital organs and elimination, uh, Sagittarius, liver, hips and thighs, Capricorn, joints, knees, skeletal system, teeth, skin, Aquarius, ankles, shins, circulatory system, and Pisces, down to the feet, toes and lymphatic system. Now this is just 
one of the lists that you know would come out of sort of a standard astrology book yeah, but yeah. there are specific medical astrology books out there that are going to probably be way more ex extensive than this list yeah and, and again it's that sort of the, the sign as a backdrop for you know what yeah. plant might be in it or yeah, yeah kind of where it sits if you could I, i've noticed some quite often with Aries on the ascendant you might have you know a scar on the head or something yeah yeah don't lead with your head right <laughs> I think I missed that actually I didn't somebody scratched me in the face but I think that scar is actually gone okay so houses here we go um and this sort of speaks to and we, like I say we're gonna spend a few episodes on this topic so the ancients for sure they look to the condition of the sign on the first house the ruler of the sign um any planets in the first house um and you know they ascribed it to the physical body but we also can find information about uh blood the food we eat diabetes second house third house is lungs asthma speech muteness lisps I imagine stuttering probably falls in there. Yeah, uh, fourth house pregnancy. And this is the, I suspect what they meant by this is this is the in utero experience and whether or not, you know, there was enough well, nourishment. Good. Well, and also, you know, people think, you know, our experience of life starts at birth, but it, no. <laughs> when, you, when I've worked with clients, there's an awful lot of stuff that comes up. Yes. You know, are we're very aware from conception on of yeah. being there and having experiences and feeling yeah. knowing what the mother's feeling and that yeah. Yeah. even even if he's on the other side of the world the kids tuned into it i mean it's amazing yeah so and yeah. so per perish the shot thought that you were the firstborn because most mothers are just a little nervous with that yeah. first one <laughs> i'm so glad i was like way down the list <laughs> But anyway, okay, so the fifth house, heart, obviously, um, daily health requirements, sixth house, very important. Um, we will, you know, be spending a lot of time as we go deeper into this in other sessions, um, looking at what's happening in someone's sixth house. Okay, seventh house, nervous system, brain, spine, eighth house, sexually transmitted diseases, karmic. Um, ninth house cerebral the hemispheres of the brain i guess uh, metabolism this was interesting uh 10th house 11th circulation of essential nutrients and the 12th house another one where you want your 12th house to be reasonably happy because <laughs> it's depression isolation and oh yes trips to the hospital oh well, yeah because the 12th house is known for being a place where you get isolated right? yeah confined and <laughs> so whether it's prisons or hospitals or whatever it's yeah. institutions that in you get institutions where you're in. yeah and, and of course this is very much focusing on the physical um, yeah yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, when we come to the planets, now I did kind of separate them out a bit. And so, um, like, for instance, the ancients, um, if they wanted to know how vital a person was, in other words, you know, is the life force strong in this person, they would look at the sun and Mars. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. definitely is your vitality. It's your... Yeah like your zest for life kind of thing it's your, yeah exactly it's your heart exactly. it's what brings you joy yeah right? and mars is to me i see mars as the will to live right yeah yeah and yeah yeah and 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 also the energy to do things it's, yeah and that and whether or not you've got the the uh persistence to work through let's say a difficult either emotional or physical or spiritual and that would be mars so mars and aries is the will to live whereas mars and scorpio is the the ability to persist through a difficult whatever whether that well be, sure yeah, yeah. It, you know you're gonna have it in a fire sign or a fixed you know cardinal sign or a fixed sign it's gonna have a different expression yeah 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 for sure 
Okay, so uh, so this is what some texts will say about the sun. Okay, so it points to the right eye, whereas the moon is the left eye. Uh, the heart of the individual, the skin, the head, the stomach, joints uh, of the in individual. I'm not sure why joints, but... No, because that's Saturn turf. You would think so. But anyway, this is one text. And the stomach is, tends to be moon because it's Cancerian. It's yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. There's things that I look at on here and go, oh, not. Yeah, yeah. I so, see, like I say, these lists that I'm doing are just starting starting awesome. points. Um, yeah. You know, if this is a field of astrology that you are interested in, then um, you know you will go way past this just little sample oh, yeah. thing that I've started with. Okay. And again, when you're dissecting things, you never, you know, you never cover things thoroughly. <laughs> okay. So uh, the moon points to the left eye, mind, brain connection, lungs, the breast. Also, the heart was in here too. Renal ducts, lymphatic ducts. Uh, yeah. So if it's the moon is being badly aspected, um, it can cause things like asthma, tube feeding, blood-related problems, and sleepiness, whereas with the sun, it was uh, complications, you know, if all of a sudden more than one thing is going wrong, um, well, that might be, that have to do with the sun. With your vitality. Yeah, and, and high moon, fever. Moon yeah. being more emotional, it's going to have a different yeah, exactly, exactly. So with mercury, of course, it points okay. to the nervous system. Also here, I found the chest, the skin again, gallbladder, arms, hair, uh, lungs. Oh, that would be interesting. Um, yeah, I just thought of one of the scenarios you went through with, that had to do with hair. That yeah. might be, you know, an interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah um, gallbladder, gallbladder is also associated though with Saturn. Okay, okay. Uh, so we've got uh, cerebral spinal system, bronchial tubes, ears, tongue, nose, navel, mouth. Uh, during negative things to mercury, it can be muscle pain, chest aches, dizziness, ulcer, and paralysis. Mm -hmm. Okay, now these two guys, um, the ancients used to say that if you had Venus-Jupiter conjunction, um, your ability to recover from dis-ease of any variety was like, you know. Yeah. 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 And, and it was considered helpful. <laughs> the downside of the Venus Jupiter would be Jupiter's excess. And exactly. Exactly. Pleasure loving. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. So with Venus, it points to vision, the face of the individual's genitals, sperm, ovaries, eggs, uterus, light in the eyes. Uh, the glands, kidneys, and the throat. Uh, so negative or unfavorable transits of Venus, uh, impotency, gonorrhea, blood loss, genital diseases, syphilis, etc. Okay, Jupiter points to the thighs, the brain again here, uh, liver, the adrenals um, of the individual, uh, kidneys, uh, and I've seen kidneys actually kidneys more so more, with Venus. More Venus from what I've heard. Yeah. Or yeah. More yeah so there, there are fight and flight yeah okay uh, liver, liver though is because it's the largest organ in the body it's definitely right that makes okay good point good point so memory um <laughs> the brain fat the tongue of the individual okay so negative transits diabetes memory problems yeah, yeah actually yes quite often with jupiter um Venus in aspect, it can be one of one of the things that can show a tendency to diabetes. Because again, you've got that yeah, the excess and the not the excess yeah. Of, yeah, of, yeah, that makes of, sense of indul indulging. Yes. Indulging. Okay, so yeah. even though Mars typically you want a good Mars because that's that will to live, um, but Mars can be you know like it's sharp objects and yeah so. Oh. <laughs> Mars points to blood, red blood cells, anal organs, the neck, the genitals again, body's energy level. Um, so when it's not favorable, Mars, we can get piles, knee troubles, tumor, blood clotting, painful eyes, weak bones, brain yeah. disorders, inflammation. 
Yeah, inflammation. Actually, that should be on that list for sure. Inflammation, inflammation. With yeah. Mars because Mars is, is so hot. I mean, yep. it's of the yep. planet. It's, it's on exactly mm -hmm. um with and i think it's i think mars is also yeah it's also associated with uh uh the immune system so if you are immune well, the, compromised it's like mars can't do the fight off the bad dudes well it's associated yeah. with rebels which is our fight and flight mechanism yeah yeah Emotion. yeah exactly um, the other thing too is uh that i was going to say what was i going to say oh inflammation and so, yeah, fevers, fevers, probably fevers and irritation and nothing. irritation. Yep, yeah. So, yeah, what do they? Um, yeah, when your joints get inflamed and yeah, anything with an itis is itis, right? It's an yeah. So yeah. you know when when the, when there's inflammation, yeah, there's yeah. something going on that again there's imbalance, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Saturn points to basically the whole skeletal system. Yes. Um, legs in particular, knees. Um, structures, the structures of the body. Yeah, organs was here, vagus nerve was here, joints were here, skin and teeth, hair right. again. That it's more the structure of those things than anything else, how they feature in. Okay, okay. In our yep. structure, right? Our, sol yep. our solid structure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. so muscle weakness, blindness, hair problems, and so on. Now, the well, other one uh, that was as well. Okay, obstruction. Yeah, anything that says stop. If it's blocked, if, if something's it's blocked, blocked, yes, it's yeah. likely, you know, a to, Saturn thing. Yeah. It can be. I mean, can be. all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. But interesting in Chinese medicine, they say that if there's stagnation, there's pain. If there's pain, there's stagnation. Okay, good point. So good point. So that would point to Saturn because Saturn is slow. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and Mars Saturn uh, might give an indication yeah. of inflammation in the joints. You know, again, you know, the combination. Yes, the combinations are important. Yeah. So the other one that I found mentioned um, was Rahu and K2, but more k2 the south node the south yeah. node contacts can be um just really not helpful in one's overall health and well-being but yeah and i think probably there's some epigenetic stuff going on when you're dealing with south node yeah with, you know which is stuff we've basically inherited from our ancestors exactly exactly Okay, so you can, like I say, the, these three lists are just meant to be a jumping off point. Um, and and yeah. modern planets have an influence as well in terms of- Yes, uh, exactly, Uranus, exactly. Um, Uranus with, as well as Mercury, the nervous system. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. um, Uranus is very electrical. It's yes. that aspect. Yeah, yeah. Was, or sudden, like a sudden like coming 15, down with something 15, suddenly. That kind of stuff would would might be a, a Uranian thing because it's yeah you know, spasms that kind of thing. Yeah, um, and Neptune. I mean, Neptune. One of the meanings of Neptune is poisons and stuff. So yes, yeah. poisons. So oh, good toxicity, point. Yes, toxicity yes. in the body, and again, that can be physical. Yeah mental or spiritual toxic. exactly exactly the other thing that neptune can do is point towards self-sabotage oh yeah yeah and it also makes i mean i will look at my daughter's chart later but it, it also often points to uh difficulty in diagnosing things because it's vague. oh okay but yeah yeah neptune huh Okay. Yeah. Still. That. Yeah. Well, and and that for me, you know, you mentioned that. Um, that's actually my mo. I have uh, Neptune in the twelfth, and I don't know how many times where I've, you know, gone in and you know yeah. something has happened, and they run a bazillion tests, yeah. and then they look at me and they go, "Yeah, we have no idea." Yeah, no, and her's what do you mean you don't have any like, but her Neptune's in the sixth. Yeah. And, and the other thing with the yeah. houses is that just as we identify well, we think of the second eighth as sort of the money axis, uh -huh. uh, the sixth twelfth is 
kind of the health axis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that with the first house and the moon. Um, the ancients yeah. in particular, um, they always, they considered the moon to be uh, another definite indicator of the physical form. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and really it is because we store our emotions in, in the body itself. Yes. Yeah. Right? That's where the emotions live. In the cells of our bodies, so it's very much a physical thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I think we can give you the opportunity to see just what it looks like when a person gets a chart up and they walk into it from this point of view. And Jill is going to. Oh, let me just double check that I've got the sharing thing. There we go. Now you can share. Yay! Alrighty. Yeah, so this is one of your daughters. Yes, it is. There you go. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so oh, just sorry, for that's the sorry, that's the solar return. I, oh, okay. So I need go to back to the that one and go to this one. Yeah. Go on the wrong one. Yes, this is her chart. Okay. So uh, let me just kind of read it off briefly for our radio listeners. She has okay. Uh, Gemini rising, she's got Cancer on the second, Leo on the third, Leo is also on the fourth, Virgo on the fifth, Scorpio on the sixth, um, and then of course the opposites for the remainder of the houses. We've got Sun in Virgo, Venus in Virgo in the fourth, uh, we have Mercury, Mars, Pluto, and the Moon, and Uranus all in the fifth house. Um, she's got Chiron conjunct the south node. That's a bit of an owie. Um, Neptune. Uranus conjunct the north. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Uranus in Sag in the sixth house. Jupiter in Gemini Neptune. in the twelfth. Yes. Neptune, not Uranus. In oh, sorry. Yes, in Neptune. The... My yeah. my bad. Okay. Um, yeah, and then Saturn is in Leo um but it's in the third house yeah, yeah. so yes. and again um you know if you go to youtube you can see the chart um yeah well if you're obviously if you're um looking at this show because we're we are taping it and you're on youtube you will see the chart it'll be in front of you <laughs> Duh. okay so take her away yeah so again so looking at just Quickly, you see she's got Gemini rising and Sun in Virgo. So Mercury is going to be important. Yes. And Mercury is, yep. con is very tightly conjunct Mars. They are in the same degree, not the same yes. minute, but the same degree. Uh, very and they're tight. what we call intercepted in Libra, because Libra is not on the cusp of any house. Right. So it's. So you might want to just sort of flesh that out a bit for people. Yeah. So when you have an intercepted sign, which this is, uh -huh. and it's the planets that are in there. It's like they're kind of almost locked in the room, <laughs> you know, without the door. <laughs> ah, yes. Because right? the doorways are the cusps of the, the houses. And when okay. you have a sign on the cusp, that, that's the fifth house has got Virgo on cusp and then it's intercepted in there. Uh -huh. So, you know, and fifth house relates to childhood. Uh -huh. You know that sort of thing. It's creativity as well, and she's very creative. And uh -huh. All the rest, but um, yeah, I think a lot of stuff. Again, sun is sun is in the fourth house, and these are all in the fifth. And I think early life when you've got planets in those houses, uh -huh. you know, we're all very much affected by our childhoods. But for some people, it's even more. Yes, imprinting. Um, yep. You know, and so wouldn't that fourth house also point towards um, epigenetic scenarios? Yeah, yeah, I think, pro and the interesting thing too is that the sun is actually on the midpoint of Jupiter and Neptune. Oh, okay. Are in the six, Jupiter's in the 12th, Neptune's right. in the 6th, again, we're in that health axis. She's right, the yes. Virgo is the natural ruler of the sixth house of health. Uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, so to me, that's like, ah. Uh, yes, so, and, and it is stated um, in some 
uh, you know, commentaries on health that, you know, if the sun um, is could be weakened by a contact from Neptune. Now, this is quite wide. It's a six degree square. Um, but it, you know, you would you would know if it's had any, any, it, any kind of impact. Well, as I say, you know, they never know what they can never label what's wrong with her. <laughs> oh, okay. So if, that's saying if she, if she yeah. has health issues, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's I think she to... tends to magnify, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, being that it's on the midpoint of those two, and and that those two are in the the houses that tend to mm -hmm. be very much about health, yeah. um, Jupiter in Gemini in the twelfth you know, that will have a lot to do with her beliefs and that sort of thing as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I would think also how well she manages that Mercury-Mars combination. Yeah, yeah. I was going to come to that, but ah. the Jupiter in, in Gemini in the 12th, again, it's like the unconscious. The 12th is the house of the unconscious, right? Yes. So, yeah. and, and the old astrologers called the 12th house the house of self-undoing because yeah. what's there we don't see it yeah the individual other, themselves other people might see it because it's above the horizon but we don't because it's kind of behind us it's like a psychic closet <laughs> so it's the unconscious and that yep. can trip us up right yep. so any tendency to overdo or overthink right um, yep. with gemini rising and mercury conjunct mars <laughs> yep. i think she's oriented to thinking a lot yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, you know, very analyzing great. that would be very the Virgo great. component. Yeah. So, getting the nervous system fired up, Mercury conjunct Mars, can be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and complicating it is that she has Moon conjunct Pluto also yes. in, in there. Yeah. And Moon Pluto is a very intense aspect because you're dealing with the emotions. Yeah. And Pluto makes anything intense. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. Uh, but in Libra, that's not going to be easily accessed because it's a mental sign. Yeah. So she's got a very strong mental nervous system orientation. Right. So would you call that um, a con constitution thing? Yeah. And I think, yeah, she's very, she's very thin. Right. Very thin and wiry. Yeah. And um, like tends, to, unlike most people who complain about trying to lose weight, she has trouble gaining, putting weight on. Right. 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 And she's, you know, she's got a history of gut issues, which, you know, yeah. moon rules stomach. Yeah. And I think Pluto is thought to be. Um, Pluto rules the sixth house of Scorpio. Yeah, exactly. But I think Pluto context, I was reading that it. Um, it makes something if it's doing, you know, if the health is impacted by Pluto, it makes it uh, a long haul to figure it out oh, yeah. or to oh, make yeah. it, yeah. you know, to like you say, bring it back to wholeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, and it's uh, because and with it, the Moon conjunct, it's 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 deep emotional stuff, uh -huh. which being that it's in Libra and she her her my her mind is much more engaged than her emotional nature right right and um, now i'm just noticing that you know that that libra circuit and then the south node which is also considered a difficult aspect yeah. um and it although it is trines to the sun which is better than squares um but it's it's us or it's ruled by that venus and venus is sitting there all by herself Yes, she is. Yeah, she has a semi-square to Saturn, though, and that, that well, that helps. That's that helps. cannot, you know, that can be some, somewhat unhealth helpful because it's a yeah. aspect um, in that Saturn tends to make things, you know, Saturn rules time. So again, as with Pluto, it can, you know, indicate more chronicy type stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, then, and then seeing your light shine with Saturn there, it's almost like I better not do that with Saturn and Leo at least. And and yet it's the in the house of communication. So well, exactly. That's, that's awkward. Uh, well, especially when you've got a Mercury Mars conjunction. Yeah. 
I mean, she want to speak out. He's very articulate, has a lot to say, but Saturn in the third is going to make that a little more challenging. And you have to say it nicely. Yes. yes. It's oh, I know what Mars and Libra is like. What do you mean I have to make it fair? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. And, she, you know, so she she has very, you know, a lot of emotional stuff around things being fair. Yes. Moon, Pluto and Mars. Yeah. Uh, Mercury conjunct all in Libra. Uh -huh. But, um, yeah, but I think, again, when she's very young, expressing things, you know, again, Saturn is challenging. Uh -huh. Yeah, it would have made that difficult. Yeah. And it squares your nodal axis too, which is. Uh -huh. Yeah. The other thing um, uh, to point out here is that Mercury, Mars, and Libra is in conjunct Chiron, uh -huh. Libra, which is at the south node. And Chiron is another thing I certainly look at when it comes to, to health. Yes. And health. which is something that the ancients, of course, would not have had no. access to. No. Yeah. But. It, but yeah modern astrology we talk about Chiron and the myth mythology around Chiron he was the wounded healer he had a wound yeah. he could help others with healing he was great with that but he couldn't heal his own wound yeah. so that's very much the the sort of uh, theme of, of Chiron in his uh -huh. chart and it's in an in conjunct with that Mercury Mars and, and the in conjunct itself is actually an aspect of a health aspect in the sense that it's not like an opposition where you can see clearly what's going on. It's, you know, right. like houses that have nothing in common. Yeah. Or signs that have nothing in common. And so it's it's like an irritation. Like it's not big enough to really deal yes. with. It's not in your face, like a square or an, an opposition, but yeah. it's there. And it's just kind of, it's an aspect of adjustment. You always feel like you're trying to adjust to something and you don't. Yeah, you don't yeah. exactly. <laughs> Right, so it it tends to be seen in modern astrology, at least, right. as a health aspect. Right, and she only has one in conjunct, but it, it is Chiron, and it's conjunct. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's a pretty important one. Yeah, and yeah. it is the ruler of her chart, Mercury. Yeah, and it rules her Sun and Venus as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, this is kind of very much tied into. Um, you know, and it's, like you were saying, keeping a balance. And um, Venus, Venus yeah. is actually in a mutual reception with Mercury. Yeah. They are in each other's signs. Yeah. Venus and Virgo, Mercury and Libra. So that, in theory, might be helpful. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it's a, it's a complicated picture, as, yeah. as, as any chart is, right? Yeah. So, exactly. Um, but yeah, and so as I say, she's always had, she's, you know, history of <laughs> doctors never know anything. Yeah. We haven't got a clue. I, I, I feel her pain, let her know. Yeah, I have yeah. Neptune in the sixth as well. Well, and, and even Uranus in conjunct the North Note there uh -huh. is, um, you know, with the nerve, it happens to affect the nervous system, right? Yes. Yeah. So her nervous system is very wired. Yes, yeah. Right. One, one would be safe to say that. He's a very, Definitely. yeah. So there's a lot going on, you know, whether she shows it or not. And she, yeah. 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 So it affects, the, but again, that's where the mental and emotional and spiritual things all come together because they all influence how, yeah. how yeah. physical uh, system is going to find balance and keep balance yeah yeah exactly and yeah. and the chart itself is you know got so much weight under the horizon yes that that you know in itself says there's a lot kind of going on you know below the surface yeah right so making it more difficult to kind of get it out right it's, <laughs> yeah like it's deeper it's like the pluto conjunct moon aspect it's it's deep, it's complex, it's eh, hard to figure out. So yeah, it's, it's a tough chart from that perspective, I think. Yeah. You know, so and, you were you also have brought a solar revolution to this. And so what we can say too about looking at a chart from this particular angle is, you know, one isn't out of balance in theory for most 
all of the time, but occasionally life will throw, you know, curveballs that really pull in the sort of am I out of balance or am I? Yeah, balance. and it's interesting because as a very, very small child, she was always smiling, always laughing. Yep. She, you know, she was just uh, really upbeat, but she did go through a lot of bullying and stuff in, uh, okay. in school. And yeah, she's always. But she wasn't, she wasn't a sickly child. Not when she was little. Right. No. She didn't, yeah. she tended to be pretty good. Uh, yeah. You know. And I would, I would chalk that up to that uh, mutual reception between Venus and Mercury. Yeah. You know, helping out. Even yeah. Though, yes, Venus, <laughs> Venus, even though Venus is Going to... majorly fallen there, but uh, yeah. But, but the vitality, I would say, is yeah, yeah, and you know, it sort of came, the the difficulties came later know, more when you know she got, I guess, mostly into high school. Okay, because you know, again, that's where you're dealing with other people. I mean, even in elementary school, she got bullied and stuff because she. The other thing with the Gemini rising and such a heavy Mercury Mars thing going uh -huh. on he is gay. And so actually she's non-binary now. She's, yes. Yeah. Get get our pronouns straight. We are we are learning. So again, um, so again, that certainly exacerbated the social issues in school. Yes. Yeah. She didn't, you know, she got along probably better with the boys, Mercury, mm -hmm. right, than with the girls. She was never, she was never the frou frou kind of girl, <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, but, you know, and so again, you know, our environment very much, very yes. much affects our state of balance and health and well being, our yep. relationships. With and so a chart like this, today in theory because our society is being way more accepting of differences it may not have you know it may have been yeah. a little easier yeah so that that nurture nature thing yeah is, yeah does also, yeah and the other thing was her her son in virgo with that uh being on, on the midpoint of jupiter and neptune uh -huh. uh, she experienced her dad i think is really difficult and the relationship there was yeah. an easy one. Yeah. Yeah, except and although she looks so much like him. Uh, yeah. Right? Her body shape and, and her face, everything. Well and see that would make sense with the the whole fourth. epigenetic fourth house thing. The sun is there, right? Yeah. So the bleed through from his his genetic history. Yeah. 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 So, so interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So that's. Uh, so what did you see in the solar return for this year? Well, I can bring that one up. Um, can you do it as a dual wheel? So I can. Dual? You can. I can do that. Yeah. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, that, that works. No, that was oh, good. no, that combines. No. <laughs> yeah. That's that what I wanted. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the solar return on her natal chart first. Mm -hmm. so still got the natal chart. We've got right. So there's this. Oh wow, she's got that. Yeah, Venus. There's right. a lot going on here. So how is her health right now? Her health is very uh, bad right now. Aww. It's shortly after her birthday. Um, she. Was, she's a teacher in Winnipeg, uh -huh. and in order to teach, she had to have the injection. Right, the, uh, um, yeah, the vaccines, to, and she reacted to it. Mm. And she hasn't been able to work since. Ouch. ouch and all ouch, of the ouch. doctors have said, oh yeah, it's from the jab. So, yeah, yeah you know. Uh, uh, look at that, you know, in terms of poison, uh, the south node conjunct that Neptune in the sixth house. Yeah, that does not look oh, good. There's that, but look yeah. at Neptune up here opposing. Right. And Mars and Mercury. Are and together. Vir yeah. And Virgo conjunct your Venus. Yeah. Um, and actually, Neptune, Neptune is midpoint of these two. So, yeah. 
Uh, very much. And Mars, you know, we said sharp things to that yes. pump. Yeah. You know, and it was poison. And so she's poisoned. And that's very difficult to, uh, yeah, deal with. So, yeah, very challenging. And, and the node is, the transiting nodes are squaring her sun. Right. So right. it's echoing that Neptune, Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So this is, and Chiron is uh, opposite her moon Pluto, uh -huh. moon Pluto conjunction. Right. With yep. transiting Venus and Libra on that moon <laughs> Pluto conjunction. So, yeah, it's been a very difficult time. She has, you know, she and her wife have four kids between them. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and she's unable to do much. She just, yeah. Uh, so what does her next solar revolution look like? Well, so oh, how, how old is she in she's this? 45, she'll be 46 this year. So 45 is a 10th house perfection. So 11th house is up next. Yeah, well. Might let's... help, but. Yeah, let's have a look at the next one. Yeah. Okay, I haven't done that one yet, but uh, just mm -hmm. one more thing to point out here. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, you know, mainly she has a moon Pluto conjunction. In this one, she has a moon Uranus conjunction. Yes, yeah, in on Taurus. that south node, which uh, they Taurus. say is not good for no. health context and, in the south And Taurus. that moon Uranus is basically in conjunct her moon Pluto. Right, yeah. So again, the health thing is not yeah. surprising looking at this. Yeah. Because that moon moon Uranus is also squaring the solar return. Yeah. So she's tied up in the historical moment of the time as well. Yeah. 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 And that I think people that would be one of those things that are it is hard if you're not kind of aware of astrological scenarios, is when you get caught up in a current historical scenario right then that energy is trying to move through you as an individual and it's big energy that, yeah yeah that can make you know i know in the past when i was doing astrology full time people would come in and that would be one huge component of why they were coming in because it's like yeah they had difficult points in their life or things were happening but it felt like it was bigger than just them yeah, yeah. And of course, it can be if you're <laughs> caught up in, you know, something like this current Saturn Uranus square. Um, sometimes these energies, they they impact people specifically. Well, and also, I mean, outer planets with Neptune aspecting with, uh -huh. with Uranus conjunct. I mean, it's outer planet stuff. Um, the other thing is more personally, she's got a solar return Mercury in Virgo. Uh -huh. Squaring her ascendant. Descendant. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a lot of challenging stuff from this. Yes. Uh, yeah. And in conjunct, you know, you've got, yeah. you've got, well, Saturn's opposite Saturn, too. She's doing a similar. Yes. Yeah. Time. Again, a passage in life. That uh -huh. kind of so, yeah. That, that's why I'm hoping to see a better next year, like coming up in August here, that. Uh, yeah. 11th house is uh can be a little bit easier um yeah so the next one actually you just have to hit next oh I know. yeah i don't do those things very well <laughs> okay but make it natal oh no go back go back go back let's make it make it natal you made it for victoria she wasn't born in victoria oh, oh that's probably close enough actually i need to make it for winnipeg because that's where she lives Oh, no, solar revolutions are done for... I do them for... Born. You do them for where? Okay, well, see, because you and I do do things differently. That's how Western <laughs> astrology does it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so well, let me try that one again. Yeah, yeah. I need to change the location. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> solar return, let's put it back to Winnipeg. I had it on Winnipeg at one point here. Oh, yeah. There you go. There we go. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So, oh. oh, we got Leo. So, is the sun happy? 
Well, it has an aspect from Jupiter. I mean, it's got a square from Mars. It's um, squaring Mars. It's uh, in conjunct Jupiter. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the aspects to the sun. And the moon is in Virgo as well, opposite Neptune. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely speaking to the lack of funds. Um, and Saturn. Yeah. So yeah, it's not going to be a, like a total bounce back. That's for no, sure. Venus is opposite Mark. Yeah, uh, Saturn. Yeah, almost exactly in their T square to Uranus. Yeah. And the set and the node. The nodes. Yeah. 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 Darn, 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 yeah. darn. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, can, I think we should probably look at it on her chart just because that's mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Basic no, exactly. context. Yeah, you can look at the chart, her natal chart on the solar return, but I just this is the transits that day anyway. So, uh, yeah. Oh wow, look at that! Um, Mercury is right back to where it was. Yeah. So the focus will be on health, definitely. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Again, yeah. yeah. Uh, the sun rules the ascendant in the solar return chart, but Mercury is still. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so this, yeah, you've got still Chiron is lingering over that Pluto moon. Yeah, yeah. Opposition to the Pluto moon. We do have Mars and Jupiter together. Um, that might help. That might help a little. Yeah. It just yeah. Might. Although Mars is squaring her sun. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Um, and that 12th house. But the, what that could speak to is, um, you know, building some awareness about how to get vitality moving. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, and yeah. really with the chart like this, uh -huh. when you have Neptune in the sixth, uh -huh. Neptune does not do well with drug therapies. No, no, it doesn't. No, Ever. it would have to. I would think movement, and, movement, and and um, change of scenery and well, well, the thing with Neptune, nature is bathing, that, <laughs> Sag, nature bathing. <laughs> the thing with Neptune and, and uh, pharmaceuticals is yeah, it's poison. Yeah, that natural. Yeah, they're poison. They yeah. they are created in a lab, and we weren't, <laughs> so they're not yeah. compatible with the body. And somebody like this, whose body is particularly sensitive yes exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly especially with it being opposite jupiter with that yeah t square to the sun mid midpoint yeah. um yeah it's she any kind of drugs alcohol and yeah pharmaceuticals not good she needs to do everything from a natural perspective and yeah. you know, it's difficult in our day and age because you know we tend yeah to there's not too much that's clean as it were <laughs> well and we tend to yeah. you know think first of going to a doctor because we're we're oh, not yeah that's the society into doing that and uh, and so you know often you get the drugs before you realize that wasn't a good idea yeah and yeah they are toxic to her for sure and yeah. problematic yeah absolutely yeah Okay, we are down to two minutes, my dear. We have done very well again. Really Yay. <laughs> but she's also got Jupiter opposing this, this stellium in Libra. That I would take as a good thing, actually. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, I would. Okay, so we will um, take a look at some very specific charts, walk through different ways of assessing the constitution and how well people work with that. Um, yeah, that we will continue with this theme next week. But in the meantime, so we will say goodbye to Jill. <laughs> and, and just a reminder, you have been listening to CJMP 90.1 FM Kafat Region Community Radio Station. Thank you for listening. And we will see you all next week. Bye.